I'm gonna give you the top five key lower back exercises that you can utilize to improve your Olympic weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming an explosive freak, you wanna get stronger, you wanna apply that to the field better, you wanna become a better Olympic weightlifter, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, our lower backs tend to take a beating. It's the nature of the sport. There's a lot of pulling, from a very low position. We have the snatch grip, which is going to lower our position of our hips, and it will put some stress on our lower back when we're snatching. Same thing with the clean, same thing with the jerk. There's gonna be a lot of stress on our lower back when we're pulling. There's gonna be a lot of stress when we absorb and catch that clean. And even to the point when we're overhead in the split position, there's going to be some stress on our lower back. But on top of that, we also know that heavy pulls Snatch pulls, clean pulls, we know that back squats, front squats, all of these exercises that supplement our main lifts, the snatch and the clean and jerk, all of those movements can dramatically improve our competitive movements and they also tend to put quite a bit of stress on our lower back. The back squat can put a decent amount of stress on our lower back. The front squat can do it just as well. There's a lot of volume, there's a lot of technical work that goes into play, and there's a lot of moving pieces that go into laying out programming for Olympic lifts to try and prevent that breakdown of the lower back. But with all these things being factored in, there's still going to be points where your lower back is just beat up and you need to find something to help you increase your lower back strength. And that's where we're gonna start. And that first key exercise that we like to utilize to improve the integrity of our lower back is going to be chaos single leg RDLs. And so when I think about the lower back and how I want to train it with various individuals, I like to look at, do they have shorter legs? Do they have moderate length legs? Do they have long legs? I also like to think about it like, hamstrings typically have much more fast twitch muscle fibers than the quads. So if I have somebody who might have weak hamstrings, I wanna really develop their hamstrings to try to improve that high rate of force production that the hamstrings can do with hip extension. So some of the things that I like to factor in is how can I train that lower back in conjunction with the hamstrings? How can we address any issues that people might have from a bilateral perspective. Typically, they're gonna to start to really favor one side over another. And that's why I love Chaos Single Leg RDLs. This is done with dumbbells with that back foot up on a band, and I like to have the band just below hip height. What ends up happening is you get a mild amount of support on that back leg, but it puts a lot of tension and a lot of force on the front leg. So you have to focus a little bit more on stability and balance. And when that happens, when there's a little bit of balance issues, there's more perturbations, which is going to lead to better recruitment on those specific areas. So not only are we going to be doing this from a unilateral perspective, but when we're executing the single leg RDLs with a band, with the chaos perspective, now those perturbations are gonna help us recruit more effectively, it's gonna improve our stability, and it's going to help us enhance that weak area. When we're executing the chaos single leg RDL, I recommend, again, using dumbbells. You can use barbells, and we, I like to use barbells quite a bit, but use dumbbells because you can get a little bit greater range of motion and on top of that, I always recommend, if you do a split jerk with that right leg forward, I recommend doing the left leg first when we're doing those chaos single leg RDLs. Try to favor the leg that doesn't go forward in your split, and typically that's going to be a way that you can start to alleviate any back pain that you might have on various positions. I recommend doing chaos single leg RDLs about once a week inside of your program, four to five sets, of seven to nine reps on each leg. Coming at that number four spot, I like to utilize 
snatch grip stiff leg deadlifts. And this is gonna be a little bit of a modification where it's sort of like that stiff legged dead mixed in with an RDL. But the reason why I like to use that snatch grip, someone who struggles with clearing their knees back right off the floor, we wanna get that vertical shin angle when we're pulling off the floor, that is a sign of a weak lower back. That's a sign of a weak coordination between their lower back and their hamstrings. So it's important to strengthen that lower back and the way it coordinates with the hamstrings. And when that happens, now all of a sudden the lifter does a better job of clearing their knees back off the floor and keeping that bar really, really tight. So utilizing that snatch grip stiff-legged deadlift is going to improve technique, but only after the coordination between the hamstrings and the glutes and the lower back, so the entire posterior chain really starts to come together and improve. One thing that you can do here with the snatch grip stiff-legged deadlift is you can also do it on a platform or on a podium. That's going to create a longer range of motion. I like to keep the shin angle very vertical. As the bar passes the knee, the lifter comes up with their trunk and then they lower, but the shin angle stays the exact same the entire way. That's a very key factor. Keep the shin angle vertical the entire pull. I like to do this four to five sets for anywhere from five reps if I want to improve that strength in a very quick time frame, all the way up to 15 reps if they need a little bit more hypertrophy work on the posterior chain. Coming at that number three spot, I like to use a movement that we have created here called the standing posterior twist. So this is an exercise that you can utilize when we're talking about a reverse hyper. If you have a reverse hyper, you can use the actual swinging motion of the reverse hyper to train this movement. If you don't, you can even utilize a band. You can attach a band to an immovable object and you can get almost the exact same activation. And so what I like to think about when we're training standing posterior twists is what is the purpose? What's the purpose of this movement? And a lot of lifters tend to favor one side over another. I've done research at various world championships where I've analyzed rotation in the snatch catch. So a lot of lifters will catch a snatch and they'll rotate slightly towards one side. At the three world championships where I analyzed different sessions, I found that 73% of lifters caught a snatch and rotated towards the side that they lead with in the jerk. So if you catch a snatch and you rotate to your left, it's very likely that your left leg is your lead leg. And so what I found is that the standing posterior twist actually does a really good job of alleviating that rotation. That rotation can lead to lower back stress, it can lead to shoulder stress, it can lead to knee issues. So if we can target that weak side initially with the standing posterior twist by doing that first, now we can start to see that the body is being more active and it's being more stable in that catch position and the lifter doesn't rotate in their snatch catch. And so one of the things that I've found with this movement is just keeping it on a 90 degree range, okay? If we can keep it on a 90 degree range with that back arm behind your back and we can rotate and pull, we wanna push through the back heel. So we wanna post up that back foot, push through that back heel, and we're gonna really feel this in our lower back and our glutes, and I believe significant activation occurs in your piriformis. And that's where a lot of lifters, especially lifters who are new to the sport, have a lot of back pain from a very weak or inactive piriformis. So I like to utilize standing posterior twists one to two times a week for three sets of 17 reps on each side. And at some point, there's some lifters who even should do standing posterior twists prior to a workout at a very low weight you can do one to two sets on each side to try and really wake up your glutes, your piriformis, and then that way when you're training, you're a little bit potentiated in those ranges, and that's going to help you when you're pulling off the floor, and it's gonna also help you significantly when you're catching overhead.
That second key exercise is going to be the reverse hyper. So a movement I stole directly from Louis Simmons, someone I've criticized in the past. So one of the reasons why I like to utilize the reverse hypers, I believe it can really help train lifters how to pull properly. I also believe it does decompress that lower back and when it decompresses and they activate their trunk effectively, they learn how to pull more effectively, but it also helps them with recovery. This is a movement where we might do 20 to 30 reps. And so this is very similar to bodybuilding, right? It's gonna help with strength and endurance. So there's a lot of pulling reps. There's a lot of squatting reps in an Olympic weightlifting session. If their lower back has higher rates of strength and endurance because of that bodybuilding style of training that we're doing, now that reverse hyper is going to play a role later on in the session in protecting and enhancing the recovery intraset, the recovery interset, and improving strength endurance. And so I like to utilize reverse hypers almost two to four times a week. A lot of my lifters will even do one to two sets of reverse hyper before they get into their training session. Now, here's a key factor. I want people, when you're executing this, to fill up your belly button and try to round your back when the legs go down and try to extend when the, when the legs get elevated. But push your belly button into the pad. When we fill that air up through our belly button, now all of a sudden we can round our back here, we can extend up at the top, and that carryover will happen in the pull because when we set up with our snatch or when we set up with our clean, especially when we have a belt on, I want to cue lifters to push their belly button into the belt when they're pulling in the clean. I want to cue our lifters when they're snatching to fill their belly with air before they snatch. And that's where just training the reverse hyper can improve your strength endurance, it can improve your recovery, it can improve the strength of the actual area, and it can also improve your pulling technique. Before we get into that number one exercise to help your lower back improve in strength, if you want help piecing all of these moving parts together in a periodized program, click on the link down below. You can head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up a custom built strength program that I'll design to help you conquer all of your goals. If you want a specialty designed program that I've put together, you can also click on the link, head over to garagestrength.com and you can check out all of our Olympic weightlifting programs that we've designed for various lifters and various problems. And we take those problems, we've created solutions and we've put it together in a prescribed program to help you conquer your goals on the platform. That number one exercise that I promise you, you've probably never done that will improve your lower back strength and your lower back coordination with your hamstrings is the round back glute ham. And I like to have our lifters do this with a bar on the back. And typically we're going to have to start with a training bar, then advance into a 10 kilo bar, then a women's bar, and then ideally a men's bar. And what I want to see when we're doing the round back glute ham is I want to see a little bit of knee flexion. I want the pads on the quads. I want some knee flexion where the knees drop quite a bit. And here's a key factor. This is one of those exercises that I believe had a enormous impact on Haley Reichert's success at this past year's U.S. National Championships where she placed second and made the senior Pan Am team and clean and jerked 105 kilos. She was having a little bit of back issues and then we put two programs together to try and target that problem, both of which had the round back glute ham in. And I believe it had a significant impact on her pulling strength. What happened is when we're talking about training the erectors, training our lower back, training our glutes together with our hamstrings, our erectors work in isometric fashion. We're always held upright. Very rarely is there an eccentric rounding and, and then a concentric extension. Very rarely does that happen in life. It's designed through isometric movement. So what I've seen with the round back glute ham is that when we get the pads on our quads and there's a little bit of knee flexion and we round our upper back and we round our mid back significantly and then we arch hard, when that arch comes out of the bottom, it lights up our erectors, which in turn light up our glutes and also 
significantly light up our hamstrings and that leads to a little bit of hip extension into the pads. Because we have that longer eccentric in the erectors, now that eccentric tension signals to our nervous system to really contract and try to recruit a lot of high threshold motor units and that improves our coordination in our posterior chain. Our hamstrings get quite a bit stronger. That leads to more effective hip extension and our erectors get stronger, our lower back gets stronger, our glutes get stronger, our hamstrings get stronger, and it's phenomenal. I recommend doing this once a week for three sets of five to seven reps with a little bit more weight, and then two sets of 17 to 20. But you could even feel this without a bar on your back. If you get on a back extension, get on a glute ham, round that back, arch, round that back and arch, and you will feel your back light up and it's gonna alleviate a lot of your back issues and help you hit those monster PRs that you're training for consistently. Now all of a sudden your back's gonna feel better, you're gonna smash those weights and you're gonna be standing on top of the podium. So if you want help with your programming and understanding periodization, you can click on the link down below. You can pick up our parabolic periodization program and course where we talk about accessories and how we piece everything together. You could also head over to garagestrength.com and pick up one of our specialty design programs so that you can see how you can improve in your weak areas. If you want more information about Olympic weightlifting, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.